Good morning, everyone. Um, this morning, we have the privilege to have with us Graham Gordon, um, who is a, an educator, a coach, and an esteemed community leader. Um, Graham is also an advisor on employment and careers um, with Fit Limited and other organizations. The floor is yours, Graham. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, and as I said, I'd like to thank my dear colleague, Jay. Um, really appreciate being involved and, and um, his foundation is doing fantastic work and it's so lovely to be involved. And thank you very much indeed, Jay, and thanks for that introduction. Okay, right, to just want to give you a little bit of a background. I've actually been involved in education formally and informal for many years. Um, from various different initiatives, including um, a large charity which I developed. And we've been involved in a lot of contract work with the government. But in particular, as Jay has highlighted, I've spent um, many years of my career working with people who are looking for work um, in all categories and all ages, but particularly long-term unemployed. Uh, and I've had um, large teams in the past of various initiatives working with me. So I'd like to start off, just to put things into context, I'd like to tell you a little bit about Fit Limited because it's very important to understand who we are and how we work, and hopefully that will make this session clearer. So Fit Limited, we're a not-for-profit company, okay? So we don't have to worry about shareholders or anything like that. It's all about the individual. And it's all about helping the individual. Very important philosophy for us. And hopefully that will come out in this um, little session. We only work in small groups. And this is very, very important. It's an important part of how we work and what we do. Because we're, we're not saying, you know, we want 20, 30, 40 people, every billion, oh, another one, another one. That's not us. We work in small groups so that people can feel relaxed, comfortable, bit more confident, supported, get to know people. In fact, I'm, I'm really looking forward to a, a personal um, marriage or relationship or something like that developing for our course because friendships are made and that's partly because of the atmosphere that we um, like to create. Very important philosophy for us. Uh, and, and we feel that that um, enhances learning as well for the reasons just stated. Another very important point, and I'll come back to this at the end of this session, is that when people engage with us, it's a very, very important point. We're not the only agency that does this, but it's, it's a very, very important point with us. We provide ongoing help indefinitely. So once people have been involved with us, if they want further help with employability issues, for example, further help with their CVs, mock interviews, um, help with application forms, they can come back at any time. And the longest, we've had quite a few people actually come back at the moment because sadly we did find them employment and they sadly lost it during COVID, so they've come back to us. I think the longest that it's taken for somebody to say, Graham, we would like your help again, please, it's about two years. And the shortage time was 20 minutes. We finished the course at three o'clock and at 3.20 already somebody rang me. So those are the two extremes. Once you engage with us, we stand by you. And if people want to learn, that's fine. We don't judge people. If people want to work, then we will move heaven and earth to help them. All the lead is from the person. Very, very important. So normally when I deliver this session or these sessions or courses, they are interactive sessions where we're having discussions. So obviously today um, that's not the case, but what I'm going to do from our course is just give you a taster of our philosophy, our tips, the kind of things that we do and the kind of things that we advise. And then to tell you a little bit more about our course. Now, um, there are various courses we do. We also run a, a job club, all our services are free and um, I'll give you more details at the end. But the main thing that we are doing at the moment, um, although, some of our other provision just since April the 12th has also opened, is a revised product, if you like, course. It's called Get Back to Work. And it's a course which is 
based on a five day course five, over five Wednesdays that we ran for about four years. We delivered for about four years in Eccles Gateway. And uh, that's accredited by Salford College. So we, 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 you know, we've got a good um, overseer to see that we're hopefully producing a good product. And we were advised that sadly, because of the current job situation, that we should um, devise a more kind of short, sharp course, particularly for people who have been made redundant. We've had people made redundant, but one person at the moment on the course who, had, who was made redundant because of COVID after 34 years. So this course, uh, although anyone can come on it, is particularly targeted people who've been made redundant recently, may have a certain level of skills, need a little bit more of a help and a push, although people can come on it whatever their work history is. I'm very pleased to say that we've had in the last few months, we've had about eight job outcomes, with bearing in mind the small groups um, we're very, very pleased with. The group that finished last Wednesday, a guy by Friday rang me and he had a really good job with the Inland Revenue and Customer Service, and he wanted he had actually another interview he wanted to discuss with me, do you think I should go to it? So that was just very recently, and he did really, really well to get something so quickly. Um, that leads actually very nicely to um, really the first point, because this guy, this guy, um, and, I, you know, all, all being well, we'd help him. I hope we had so that he then um, managed to sharpen up his processes and then he got the job. But the job that he got, which is the same was while he was with us, was the hundredth job he'd applied for in recent weeks. The hundredth job. And this is a really important starting point, okay? Because I am a glass half full person, okay? And I'm not saying it's easy, but being positive and being determined, and we're standing by you to help, really is half the battle won. And just to expand on that theme a little bit, when Boris Johnson took over, I'm not being political, I'm not allowed to be just talking about personalities. There was a commentator who said, you can't, you can't run a country just on confidence because he is a very confident person. Whatever you think of his you know, abilities, we're not gonna go there, but he's a very confident person. And I actually thought that's not actually true because being confident is half the battle won, okay? This is the philosophy that we push in our course. And we go into detail and I'll give you some tips today. We, sorry, just want to get something, there you all. We will give you some tips today, but this is the philosophy that we push and we expand on it. And I will give you as an, another starting point. Here, you can see is a blank sheet of paper, okay? Here's a blank sheet of paper. Now, okay, that's, I've got family here and I've always loved it here and I've got grandchildren here and there's lots of reasons to be here. I've, I've always loved Manchester. But when I came here in terms of business stroke work contacts, it was a blank sheet of paper, okay? Now, you know, there is the saying, if you want something, don't ask a busy person. But now look at my diary, right? Look at my diary now, okay? You know, absolutely Friday, sorry, Sunday to Friday, absolutely chock a block. Okay. And if I can do it, you can do it. Okay. Now, um, in the course, we actually cover the two day course. We cover, we have the benefits of employment. We cover good practice with CVs in, 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 I hope in a fun and interesting way. We tell anecdotes, we get people talking, you know, we want it to be lively, we don't want it to be dry. Team building, interview techniques, application form, form self-employment, it's not for everybody, but we discuss it, sometimes it gives people ideas, good practice with job search, etc. So these are the topics that we have on an interactive basis. And I'm going to give you in this session some of the tips, okay, under these headings that we give. We expand on this a little bit more, um, not obviously all at once, but during my career so far, I've not all at once, as I say, I've employed 500 staff. The most that I've had at once at this charity were, um, was, was 130 staff. OK, and this is an important point, because when I'm doing training and when I'm doing sessions, OK, I have in mind 
um, approaching things from an employer's point of view. Uh, I'm not saying there aren't other trainers, you know, who are very good. Of course, I'm not saying I would never say that. But often people who are training, they've trained to train, they've trained out of a book. They don't necessarily know the mindset of employers. I do know, FIT also employs people. I do know the mindset of employers. There's a lot of tips that I can give you. And also, the having worked with people, my team, looking for work, I hopefully can give you tips to bring the, um, these two parties together. So those are kind of background points and I'm gonna give you some examples of what we do because obviously I can't condense the whole two days into a short session. Now, um, the, some of these things to say are obvious, but um, nevertheless, they hopefully will be helpful. It's interesting, this first thing that I'm going to mention, I saw some people at our job club yesterday, some new people I hadn't met, and who didn't actually know um, most of what I'm about to say, which was astonishing to me, but anyway. The important thing is, there aren't jobs out there. I, you know, nobody, somebody said to me recently, unfortunately they're not saying it anymore, oh, no one's taking on, nobody's employing people. This is not true. Let's not make problems that don't exist. OK, if any of you and we can help you if you need it, if any of you are not on the Indeed job site, I strongly, strongly advise that you register on the Indeed job site. It does have its fault. It puts stuff in the wrong area. It duplicates. It doesn't take stuff off when it's filled. OK, you know, there are faults on it, but it has huge numbers of jobs which people aren't aware of. And in the session this week with a group, I just randomly, I had an email from Indeed, and I randomly went through it, and it was astonishing. There were 16 jobs on that email that came in while we were running, while we were delivering a session. And all bar, about three of them were all posted either that day, the day before, or within the last week. Okay, there are jobs coming um, on the market don't, as I say, create problems that don't exist. Things are out there. It's about how you can best um, stand a chance of accessing jobs. Now, there are four things at play when you apply for a job. Your experience, your qualifications, and you, how you present yourself in your written work, your CV, or your, or, and all your application form, and, of course, your performance at interview. And as I say, we go into a lot of detail in an interactive way in the course. Now you can't, at the point of applying for a job, you can't do anything about your experience and qualifications at that point. You can, you know, you can talk them up and market them better, which I can help with, but you can't change them. However, however, and this is the first very important tip and point. What you can do is you can sharpen up your written work, okay? Sharpen up your interview practice. OK, those are things, positive things within your control. When you do that, and I've seen this happen again and again. I've mentioned to you eight jobs recently. When you do that, it's a double win. Not only do you promote yourself, but you actually fight off the competition. OK, very, very important point. As I said to you, I'm, a, I'm about glass half full. Now, I always back up things with examples. One of my daughters, who'd only ever worked what, she'd only had one very part-time job and she applied for a job with the NHS. There were 149 applicants for two jobs, 149 applicants. She got one of those jobs. Now, obviously with such a large number, statistically, there were bound to be people who had more experience than her and she knew some of these people. So of course there were, um, and certainly more qualifications. She'd had one part-time job. And she beat off all this competition. You know, obviously I wouldn't have told her this, but she said to me, what do you think my chances are before? Obviously I wouldn't have said zero, you know. Um, but statistically it was against the odds because she really excelled, okay, with her written work, her interview performance. I mean, I helped, I'm not saying, you know, it was all up to me, of course not. But she was so good, she beat off fierce competition. I can give you many more examples of that, okay? So this is the point. 
very often people focus, and it's understandable, people are very stressed at the moment, I understand that, but you can see our approach. They focus very much on the fact that they might have limited skills, they may only have experience in one sector, for example, retail and nothing else. They, um, they're worried if they haven't worked for many years and all that, and, and I can understand that, and we, could do, we deal with that, okay? But that's a glass half empty. But these other two things, they're not sensitive to that. How you promote yourself, as I say, in your written work for jobs, and how you promote yourself in an interview, okay? You can work on those things, and those are things which are not directly um, affected by those first two things. And that is the philosophy. That is what underpins all we discuss, all we do, and all the sessions that we have, okay? Now, I'm going to give you some examples, some tips. Hey, Chris, uh, just some examples from the two days, um, to be specific. Uh, and let's, now we go, if we go to, sorry, just to finish up about job sites, Indeed is very important. I sat down with, on Indeed with somebody yesterday who hadn't actually never heard of it, didn't even know where to start looking for jobs, and was really motivated by it. Because interestingly, pre-COVID, if you actually go on Indeed, very simple, just Google Indeed, and you put in the search bar all jobs in all sectors, or you can, you know, you can put specific sectors in Greater Manchester. It used to throw up a staggering about 40,000 jobs. As I say, a lot would duplicate, or some would duplicate it or in the wrong area. But the point is, if it was 4,000 or even 400, it's a lot. Now, the COVID effects, it now shows about 20,000, although it's gone up to 27,000. So you can see there is a huge COVID effect, but the jobs are still there. OK, and you can go on there and you will see and we can help you. Um, and lots of people out there can help you. It's a fairly simple process. Um, <clears throat> CV and um, cover letter. It's a very simple process. You can apply for jobs in a proper manner quite quickly. And there are huge opportunities, okay? So this is, this is one, one tip. Broaden your thinking, cast your net wide. This is, this is a leaflet for our course. It's obviously different during COVID, and it's, this is more to agencies and individuals. But every course we run, to get five people, we hand deliver pre-COVID, it's now online, whatever, but 2,000 leaflets. You see, we have to go, we have to really cast the net wide to get this little, this, this little bit of response we want. And it's the same way with jobs. This guy last week, 100 applications. But he didn't give up. That's the other point. You know, that's, that's, that's another tip. However despondent you might get, don't give up. Make sure that, you know, there's, there's, there's mentors, Jamie, whatever, you know, ever that you have a mentor who's standing there can help you and can boost your spirits if um, you're going through difficult times. But just to close off this first tip, and as I say, these are just examples from the individual topics in the course. There's a lot more out there than you might think. Just as I say yesterday, um, I showed this guy this very, uh, this very point through going on Indeed. If you actually Google top job sites, it will throw up about 10 to 20 different job sites and you may be quite fascinated about how many different sites there are, a variety of jobs, okay, and the number of jobs, not just on Indeed, although that's something we strongly recommend. I'll give you a, another example. I found for somebody who wanted to work with animals, there is a bespoke job site called care.com. It's the most incredible job site, and it has Salford, Stroke, Manchester, whatever, Greater Manchester, other, you know, all the ten boroughs, whatever, whatever you want. It has jobs in Greater Manchester, and the incredible thing about Care.com is that it's got jobs. I've never seen anything like it. It's got jobs caring for animals, and separate section jobs caring for people. Really amazing. And it's got individual private jobs and also jobs with organizations. And you may not, you know, you may, you probably were not aware. And a huge, you know, huge numbers of jobs there. It's incredible. Many people employ dog walkers and, and they're, child, they're, they're paying five to 20 pounds an hour. 
um, incredible. You can also, you can do this in Indeed to a certain extent, but you can actually market yourself as well on care.com, you know, by saying, I'm a reliable and responsible person. I'm happy to do, to support people in their homes, you know, with, with, with befriending, odd jobs, bit of shopping care, you know, you can actually market yourself and people go on this site to try and see they want to employ someone privately. But it also has, as I say, adverts for companies. You may not have been aware of that. That also leads on to another very important tip. And I've got a lot of information about this that, that can help people. The uh, one, it's not the only one, but there is a sector, and this came up yesterday, the session I was at, it comes up all the time. There is a sector with a huge, very significant shortage of staff. It's not for everybody. But we have a lot of people who start to think about it, and the vast majority get jobs within a month or two. And that's the social care sector. A lot of people came from the EU, and they don't have they don't have that throughput anymore. Plus, it's not for everybody. A lot of people they, they do the job, and after a few days, they say, "I ain't doing this job right," and they're off because they find it too tough. Um, also, of course, COVID has um, put people off a bit, but hopefully, that's getting better. But this is important. And do you know? There is a project in Greater Manchester, I went to a Zoom presentation recently about it, that only focuses on training people for the care sector because the care sector is so de desperate. And again, if you go on Indeed and you go on care.com, you will see the jobs that are there. And I've got specific contacts in that sector that I can help recommend people, you know, with, within the rules, etc. So... So some, some, just some examples from the job search module, if you will, but talking about Indeed, looking at job sites, looking at spoke job sites, it's very motivating to see that there's lots of things out there. Highlighted for you one sector as a tip um, where for, for a decent, reliable person, it is almost impossible not to, to, to get a job, almost impossible. So another very clear tip if it's something that you've not thought about. And the other advantage of the care sector is that most providers, they don't mind if you haven't got an MVQ qualification or um, experience, they will train you up because they're so desperate for good people. Even the few that say they want that very often will, will drop it for, for, for the right person and will train you. So that's another advantage of that sector. Okay, You may not have even worked in that sector for, for an hour of your life. It's still somewhere where you'll be um, considered very seriously. And as I say, there's more information I can give you about this, about that. It's just examples. But that, again, is a practical tip. If it appeals, it's a very rewarding job. And, you know, you want something where you stand a better chance of getting in there than there's an example. OK, so just a few tips um, just extracted from the job search module. There are obviously um, a lot more things we go into. CVs. Now, <laughs> this is my this is my hobby horse. You could talk about this for hours, but we, but we don't have hours. So I'm just going to um, give you some examples. Now, this is a really, really, really important point, okay? Really important point. If this was the only point that you took out of this session, I, 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 hope, it, I hope it will help you tremendously. And I will give you an example of this. The trick with a CV is you want to put, it doesn't have to be spectacular, but you want to have something that you put that makes you unique, makes you different, makes you stand out, okay? This is a very important point, and I'll give you an example. This was just pre-COVID. I was working with a colleague. Um, we do work with Salix Homes, and I was working with a colleague there who, who, who I see CVs many every week. She sees many CVs every week, and she had a pile of CVs there. She doesn't normally show them to me. She's looking at probably more than, than me. I mean, I see a lot. She's probably looking at more than me. But she was selecting people to recommend them forward for, for a job, for a company, okay? And she had a pile of CVs and she showed me only one. She showed me only one. Now this is fascinating. And this one in the personal statement start, it said, I am good at customer service. I have good customer service skills, fine. That's not unusual. And some probably sees it hundreds of times. Um, and I like to make people smile. Now, this was interesting 
because for a split second, she thought that was Cordy and I thought that was Cordy, but only for a split second, we both, she said, look at this, Graham. She said, I like that. And I looked, what do you think? And I said, yeah, that's fantastic. That's something different. And she had dozens. See, you see the point? She had dozens of CVs there. And that little bit different, not just, I'm good at customer service. I like to make people smile. It actually was unique and it was different. And that made it that, that alone put it onto the next pile. Okay, a very good example. Doesn't have to be spectacular. If you need help from me or somebody like me, whatever, to talk it through with you to see what your um, unique special thing is that you may want to put in. Um, I'm sure there's people to say, I'm happy to do it. There's lots of people out there um, who um, would be happy to do it. But this was a, this is a point, everybody, okay? That if you've done your CV, just like a, a boring list, looks like a factory line produced CV, well, that's gonna be noticeable. The other side with the prospective employer. You want something that's a bit different so that it stands out. OK, really important. I'm speaking to a work coach from a job centre recently who was saying, asking me to help because they had um, a customer who they felt was actually you know, you know, had a lot of skills and should be really doing quite well. Was actually finding it quite difficult to find something. And she, she mentioned about the CV and I was talking about factory line CVs and she made an interesting point. She said, do you know, Graham? I've had a range of customers recently and all their CVs look exactly the same. It's done by the same person. And you're absolutely right. Well, this is, you know, this is no good. This is no good. You want to be different. You want to stand out and you want to be positive about yourself and confident about yourself. I know it's difficult, but that, that's the frame of mind you need to be in. Okay. So this is the point. Very often, and there's plenty of good trainers out there, CVs are done just like um ju ju just like lists and they're dry and boring there's nothing special and there is a paradoxical another tip you know in these difficult times when yes there is more competition but it doesn't mean you shouldn't be positive there is a paradoxical thing here it's about the only good thing when, the, when there is a lot of competition when employers are sitting there and i know i've done it and i speak to employers all the time i've had careers in a school when they're sitting there looking through hundreds of um, CVs more than they may do when, when the economy is, is, is running uh, more effectively. Ironically, if you've got something that makes you stand out, it's going to have a disproportionately positive effect because if they're looking, say it's an administrative job and all the CVs are similar, all these CVs look the same, all the CVs are people with similar backgrounds and experience, okay? And they just don't know, they can't separate the wood from the trees, they don't know what the hell to do. See, in the past, they might only have 25 or 40, 50. It's a lot easier. So ironically, if you've got something there like that, I like to make people smile, something there that makes it stand out, it actually, in the current climate, it's going to make it more likely because they're just looking for something that's a bit different. Yes, I like this onto the next pile. So that's a very important point about CVs. Now, there are dozens of points we cover. We cover um, very bad practice with CVs. I've actually seen CVs where, and obviously I've been tactful to people, where CVs are so bad, they're actually undermining their ability to get a job rather than enhancing it. So we cover all those things. And then we cover, of course, good practice. Um, and I'll just give you some very quick, obvious tips, but it's a lot more detailed in the course. You know, the layout must be good. Spelling and grammar must be good. OK, must never, ever be more than one and a half, two pages. Um, you shouldn't miss anything um, out. You can put personal skills. These are just to give you some really clear, practical tips in this session. But we, of course, we go into a lot more detail. And obviously, the opposite of that uh, makes a bad CV. I'll give you an example. There was one guy. In fact, a job came in this morning. It would be ideal for this guy. Someone's just asked me if they know anybody um for, for 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 this job and this would be ideal for this guy but he seems to have totally gone, gone into hibernation i don't know what's happened to him but i'm trying to even get a hold of him this is a job just for him anyway this guy fabulous guy enthusiastic he loved driving 
he had had driving jobs, Costa Coffee, I think he was there for five years, and he was made redundant, he loved it. He'd had driving jobs for over 40 years, and he loved it. And his CV starts, just to give you an example, and it was, went on like this. He said, Graham, you're right, this is horrific. It had been written for him, you're right, this is terrible. It started off, I have an interest in driving over 40 years. Excuse me, you have an interest? It doesn't even mean the same thing as that you've done it as a job. You know, I've got an interest in Madonna. I've never met her. You know, you've got an interest in something. That doesn't mean you've actually worked at it. And I said, it should be saying, I've worked as a driver for over 40 years. What a terrible mistake. In the opening line, and it went on like that with these terrible mistakes that, that undersold himself. And, uh, and he was right, you know, he, he didn't write this, he just relied on somebody and we changed the whole thing. And, and, and yes, his fortunes did, um, did change. Oh, and by the way, most of the people, these eight people who've got jobs recently are in their 50s and 60s. As we know, age discrimination is illegal, but we know sadly it goes on. But it's important to highlight that because, you know, don't, don't, don't um, let your age um, drag you down too much. It's very, very important. Now, um, so um, again, and the terrible thing is that that could be a deal breaker because if current climate, if someone has got 300 CVs in front of them and they see the first line, I've got an interest in driving and they're looking through the stuff very quickly, they could say, well, this guy's never even done it. He's just interested in it on the next one. Only. So that's one. And there's many more examples I could give you of, of, um, of bad errors in CVs. I just very quickly before told you about good practice, say it should be, the font should be nice, it shouldn't be more than two pages, to be nicely laid out, etc. These are obvious things, but they're very, very important. I saw a CV recent, a few months ago, actually, from someone who was on our course. And this CV was one of the best I've seen in my life. It was excellent. This guy was about 60, 61. This CV um, was so good, Goes very neat, nicely on to um, another point. This CV was so good, and I see dozens, that I could not not give him a job if I had it, because it was fabulous. Fabulous. Um, another thing you need to be careful about is a friend of mine showed me her CV, and it was really embarrassing. It wasn't the CV. It was a narrative. It was a story, and I had to tap for least, We had to do the whole thing again. But this guy that I just quoted, and I've never in my life seen anybody else be able to do this. He actually mixed narrative with a proper CV format, and it worked. I've never seen anyone do that before. But it was so good. And this guy now, 6061, he's got lots of work since he came on the course. Um, say, it, it made me feel, I wish I had something for him. It was going to be such a fantastic asset. And this goes on to another very important tip. Remember, I'm just giving you just little snippets, but hopefully clear things so you see that where we come from and hopefully they will help. I know this isn't easy, but this is what we chew to people and we give one-to-one -one help outside of the courses. The, the trick of the whole thing, I know it's not easy, but... Um, if we now just do a little bit from the interview module, we talked a little bit about CV, just a tiny bit, a little bit about job search from the um, interview module. And again, there's an awful lot. I'm drama trained, so I like that module because, you know, there's elements of drama to it and we cover good practice, et cetera, et cetera. And just to give you again a little bit of a flavor, there are three ways in which we communicate body language, the way we talk, um, and of course, the way we dress. OK, and you need to get all those three things right in an interview. If you, if you get one of them right, not the others, they, it can be a deal breaker for a job you might have got. OK, body language is incredibly important and eye contact, how you dress is the same, how you speak. And we go into a lot of detail, but that gives you three obvious tips. But we go into a lot of detail about that. We discuss it and we crystallize the points. But a clear tip here is. What you need to do in an interview, and I've sat in many interviews, hundreds of interviews over the years, and I've seen this again and again, and I say it's not easy, but you need to go into that interview and just like this guy did on his CV, and you need to make that panel feel 
okay, that they would lose out if they didn't employ you. That your skills are such that you would be an asset to the company. Okay, that's the mindset. Not the mindset is, oh, I've got an interview today, I've got an interview tomorrow, I need to get through it, what am I having for lunch, I just watch television. No, no, you go in there. You go in there, right, with a passion and an energy. I get people to do this. I'm not saying it's easy. Some people have, you know, have had two-hour private sessions to get them into, into that state, and then they have got the next interview. You know, nothing's guaranteed, but this, you know, positive, positive thinking. Your mindset is not just to get through that. Everyone's nervous in an interview, and anyone who says that they're not is not telling the truth. But your mindset should be that the company's going to lose out on the organization if they don't employ you. That's what my daughter did, the example I gave, and she beat off 147 other people. All right? That's the, that's the mindset, and, and in your written, your application forms as well. And the other side of the coin to that as a tip, very important, I sat down with somebody yesterday in the job club who applied on Indeed on Monday, a young guy, and he had an interview yesterday less than a week and did very, very well. I was preparing him. I'm talking to him about these points. The second, we did this together actually, we went on the internet. The second point, the other side of the coin for that is that you must, 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 and it's quite easy nowadays with the internet, you must have done your homework about the company. Never, ever, ever write an application form or go into, into an interview without having research about the organization. OK, so what you're saying to that prospective employer is. I am the person you want. I'm going to really enhance your organization and get that across in a non arrogant way. And we go into that in detail. And the other side of the coin is it's your even if it's not, you know, you're just putting on um, your best performance for that, that interview. Your organization is where I want to work. You know, not in Sainsbury's, not in now. It's impossible to go into an interview nowadays without directly or indirectly being asked about what you know about the organization. Several people have told me recently, several people recently, including this week, that they've actually been asked, what do you know about the company? They've actually been asked that question directly. So another very clear tip for an interview. OK, and again, I'm just extracting some key key tips from a whole range of points and issues um, from these topics. But people are being asked that directly, okay? And if you show another thing, you know, find two or three, maybe they've won awards, whatever it is, find one or two, three, well, two or three rather, um, specific points about the company, which shows that, you know, you seem to have, you know, really looked into it properly. Look at their annual report on the internet. OK, so you're, you're you're projecting. Right. You see, I'm projecting here in this session that all that's important to me at the moment is trying to help people who are watching this recording. And equally, you have to project all that's important to you is to give of your assets, of, of your skills, rather, to be an asset to that company or organization. And it's that organization that you want to work with. And that's why you must do your research. OK. You, you're not really supposed to, after a panel, you're not supposed to comment until everybody um, you're seeing has been seen because um, it, it you know, cuts against equal opportunities, but people are only human. And I've sat in panels when someone's gone out the room and the panel has gone, Whoa, we liked them, okay? And that goes on very neatly to another very important point about your application forms and interviews, okay? And you may, different tutors say different things. But remember, I'm coming at this also from an employer's mindset and from speaking to employers. And I can tell you this, and hopefully it will help motivate you, you know, if you are worried about your experience um, and qualifications, etc. But at the end of the day, just as we, I've said with my daughter, at the end of the day, most employers, one of the, whatever the job, one basic things that they're often looking for is do they like you? Are you nice? Are you coming across well? Are you going to fit in? You might have all the qualifications and experience in the world. If they don't get those vibes from the interview, that person's not gonna get it. And someone who may have less 
experience and qualifications, which maybe you would then get the job. Um, are they going to be reliable? Are they going to work with commitment? Okay. These, some people will, will, will not agree with, with me, but everything I'm telling you in this session is based on my own experience or other people telling me and being ahead of careers, I, I'm always checking out what I say. But all those things you may not realize are more important to employers than you may imagine. And all of you who are watching this, I'm sure will be able to um, project that and have those um, what we call soft skills, but important skills. And to give you an example, as I, as I always do, I was recently asked with a, a job I was connected with, a, a community IT job, to be on an interview panel for Salford Council for a job. I couldn't do it, unfortunately, because I was teaching that day. But the person who I know well who set up this post, she said exactly that. She said exactly that. Okay, she said, at the end of the day, Graham, as you know, what we're looking for is somebody we like, somebody reliable, someone who's nice, someone who's going to fit in, someone who's got commitment to the community. Exactly backed up. I didn't know she was going to say that. That's the council. We work closely with the council. And again, we have contacts there. They have work experience schemes and jobs. Again, I, I can help people on an individual basis if they're interested in working with Salford Council. Um, there are people there I know who can help. It, it, you know, obviously within um, ethical practice. But that is the council, a very big employer. Okay, and that's what they said. And these are things, you know, these are things that are not directly sensitive to your experience and when you last worked and your qualifications, etc. But all these things, you know, you you can you can work on. Now. Um, Okay, another interviews are obviously very important. I've talked about the three strands. Mock interviews, we do also, we, we do provide mock interviews. Uh, obviously, there's no way this is a guarantee. Of course it's not. Um, but there's never been anyone that Fit Limited hasn't done a mock interview for who didn't get their job or, or a course they were applying for. Obviously, that's not a guarantee. Um, but hopefully, we're, we're on the right track with this. But it's very, very important. This is another important tip. If you haven't had an interview for a while and you're lucky enough to get them, and you will if you keep on trying and have the right attitude and the positive approach, then um, it's essential, whether it's through FIT, um, anybody who can, that wants to do this for you, family, friends, whatever, it is essential that you have a mock interview, particularly if it's a job you really want. It's absolutely essential. And certainly we at FIT can either do the mock interviews or write the questions, etc. Now, to back that up with an example, as I always do, somebody on our course a few months back said, I always fall, fall to pieces in interview, Graham. You know, I, you know, she kindly said, I like your interview techniques, etc. I learned a lot, but I'm just no good at interviews. I can't, I fall apart. Will you give me a still Zoom, Zoom mock interview? I said, I'd be delighted. And it's interesting, during the interview, she actually fell to pieces, she just fell apart. And she said, Graham, I can't do this anymore. And I said, who's Graham? I'm Mr. Brown interviewing you because I was I was a character and I'm not going to drama train. I'm not going to have a character. But anyway, we had to, I actually, the mock interview should just have been about 40 minutes, 40, 45 minutes. In the end, I gave this person, I'm not, this is not anything about you know, its abilities, whatever. It's, it's about the principle of mock interviews. I actually, in the end, I gave her a two hour session, um, not like expected, we, we, we did a debrief. I gave her further tips about um, how she can calm down in interviews. She had, which we knew about, an interview a couple of days later. Job she really wanted as an administrator with an NHS provider. And she got the job and she very kindly, it was very kind of her, she wrote to us saying it was only because of that session. I'm so grateful. I went in more confident. I couldn't have done it. Now, the point of the story is not to say, oh, fits brilliant. That's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm highlighting to you with an example, not just waffle, with an example of the difference that a mock interview can make. OK. And when she started the course with us. She was very despondent. I think she was about 50, 54, 55. She was um, very despondent during COVID that she would get anything. But we worked on her issue. And I think it was only her second interview um, of, of recent months and she got the job. So the point I'm making is you cannot underestimate mock interviews. So if you're just trying to take from this, how can I improve 
my interview skills because I can only only time for a few points. Then, as I say, you want to come across. You've got to be careful about body language. You've got to get your body language right. You've got to get your clothing, your dress code right. You've got to wait, get the way you speak right. As I say, we go into a lot more detail. You've got to go in there with the attitude that you have to employ me because I am going to be the person that's going to fit in. I'm going to do well for you. And it's your company I want to work for. And this is why. OK. And the whole another practical tip. Mock interviews are essential. Okay, so there's a few practical tips. Again, this is just a few things from what we do, but hopefully gives you a flavour and hopefully it's practical. Okay. Um, right, again, very with application forms, the, the last two kind of topics really just to give some clear tips. Application forms, the most important section, not all application forms have this anymore, but I've still seen many that do, is why do you want this job? or what are your strengths and weaknesses um, that you would bring to this job? Now, a story about this. I told you about this um, job where I built up a charity and um, we worked a lot, there were four of us and we built it up for 40,000 a year to 3.2 million a year over a 20 year period. And we had a fabulous time, we did government contracts we worked a lot with the Prince's Trust, which I've started doing again in Greater Manchester. Here's a picture of me with His Royal Highness, the eighth time I met him um, at Buckingham Palace just before COVID, when we're talking about the Prince's Trust in Manchester and getting them involved. Now, the point I'm making is that, that, that I'm giving these examples because I'm, I'm actually trying to say that great things came out of something. But do you know the great, those fabulous 22 years that I had with that charity that we built, it all happened because someone else didn't fill in an application form properly. Another example, and that changed my life for the better. I don't know what happened to this other person. If you had done, I don't know what I would have done in those 22 years. I'll never know. Um, it was really interesting. After I got this job, I saw the file of applicants. Very important lesson. Should be obvious. I saw this file of applicants. And there was one guy there. In those days, you were told to put everything down. Now you must never have a CV more than two pages. It, 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 it will almost definitely be rejected. Right or wrongly, that's the convention, if not the rule. In those days, it was different. You were told to put everything down. This guy literally had a book of 90 pages. He had far more qualifications than me at the time. He had far more experience. And he didn't even get an interview. And I thought, he's, you know, he's much better than me. I obviously didn't say that to my boss. You know, why didn't you get the job to him instead of me? Because it would undermine me. But I just said, out of interest, and I never forget this. I said, why this guy, an interview is fabulous. And he said, because in the section that says, why do you want this job? He said, just look at my other 90 pages, my CV. And if somebody can't even be bothered to make a case why they want to work for me, for this organization, this company. I don't care about their experience. I don't care about the qualifications if I'm not interested. So you see that as an example that highlights that any question about why you want this job. We once had a job advertised for a Princess Trust team lead, a very stressful job working with young people who are socially excluded full time for three months. And then you start again with another group. And this guy in his application, when we said, why do you want this job? People, I am a builder. Right. There may be transferable skills, but I'm a builder. That's how he justifies a really difficult teaching job. You know, bin, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. waste of time, waste of time. So this is, a, oh, that's what I'm saying. You've got to make a case why you want that job. Another tip, only just some examples, in the application form, you must put examples in a question like that of every task um, and every task in the job description and every requir requirement in the job spec. You must put an example. Don't put a load of waffle. Must be example of every single one. So you're making a really clear, detailed case. Preferably always examples from work, but you can put examples from voluntary or unpaid work. And it's fine. It's better than not. You know, put examples from um, your personal life. So if there is a job task, which you've got a lot of experience of, um, but not in work, but only in your personal life, 
still put that down. Don't just say, no, I've got no experience because you haven't done it on a paid basis. You still put that down. It's still a skill you've got. It's about you, you know, it's not about rules. So you want all your skills down there, but within, as we talked about before, um, if it's a CV, proper format, if it's an application form, there's a lot more. Again, it's got to be neat. It's got to be spelling grammar. There's an awful lot um, there, which we cover in the course, but you, you get a flavour. And um, I'm afraid application forms do one properly. I help people with them all the time. You're talking about two to four hours. Um, they are really, you know, to do them properly. Um, the Now, uh, coming to the end of the session, team building skills, very important. You can't, you cannot really be in an interview and, and in a lot of cases even apply for a job where team building skills do not come up directly or indirectly. I even saw in this care.com, there was a grooming parlor in Prestwich. This wasn't even in the job papers, it was in the advert. And the first thing that they had in the advert was, must be a good team player. I don't know how the dolls could tell, but anyway, but the point is, even in something like that, you know, when you need a very small team and a very specific task, really important, okay? So you need, you need to, we cover this, we don't do, because we don't put people on the spot, all these team exercises, I am Graham and I like this pen, you know, um, we make sure that people are aware of what makes a good team player and we discuss that and to give you again some examples, obviously the ability to listen, the confidence to contribute, valuing everybody in the team, reliability, commitment to the team, again, it's very important, respecting everyone's views, even if you disagree, etc. knowing where the balance is between contributing and disagreeing, because I once had someone on our team, always, that's stupid, this is wrong, that's that, you know, we don't like that, you're talking rubbish, this is dangerous, and the rest of the team couldn't stand it, but did this person ever actually contribute something positive to the team meeting to know? The interesting thing is she was fantastic as head of her department in her own. She was head of our offender, ex-offender services. She was fantastic at that. But as a team player, she was terrible. And you've got to, you've got to be good at both in, in most situations. Now, um, OK, to, to draw it all together, and then I want to end with a little motivational short story. Um, I'm just going to check that I have covered um, most of, yes, we, we do, by the way, there is an important point here. We do operate normally out of Eccles Gateway, the library, our training and services, and out of the Angel Centre, which is our notional base in Salford. Eccles Gateway has been closed since the 23rd of March last year for external partners, and is still not open. We're waiting, which is why we're doing a lot online. Can't wait to get back. But, which I'll come back to right at the end, the Angel Centre reopened on April the 12th. So that's pretty exciting, within obviously COVID rules, and I will come back to that. Um, I just want to make sure that I haven't missed any important points that I wanted to cover. I don't think I have. Um, but before we go to, 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 the, to, to the posing bits, um, and just to kind of draw this all together, um, what I've been trying to get across here, I've mentioned the topics that we cover, is, in fact, I may as well close this point off now, is that we have a range of services connected with career development, connected with um, long-term unemployment uh, or just straightforward unemployment issues. And as I say, I'm, I'm, I personally am head of careers in a school, but also in Fit Limited, not-for-profit, say we run courses and services. What I've tried to do in this session is give you some, a few practical tips that we cover in the course, which is normally interactive um, under each of these headings. But of course, I must stress that there is an awful lot, you know, um, obviously this is originally a five-day course and now at the moment a shortened two-day course, trying to crystallise some of it in, in an hour. So it's limited what I could cover. So I do stress that some of the points, sorry, that all the points I've shared under each topic is just a very small number of what, of, of what we cover and the advice we give. But hopefully, I do hope it's been of practical value. Um, to close off that point, and then as I say, there's just one little motivational story at the end. We, uh, the Angel Centre, which is in 
which is one St. Philip's base, Salford, it's M36FA. There we have a we have an accredited ASDAN employability course, which we have just started. Um, here it is. It's, it's accredited externally, so you get a certificate at the end, which shows prospective employers that you've actually been proactive. You're not just been looking for jobs. You've got an actual qualification to try and sharpen up your skills, so that looks good. Um, we And this next bit is, is, is may well be the thing of most in interest. On a Thursday morning, it's, it's operation, it operates 50 weeks a year. We cover holidays and people are away and stuff. Um, it's just a Christmas period when it's closed. 50 weeks a year and it was quite sad we were closed from last February in fact 2020 until April week of April the 12th uh, yes the 12th every Thursday morning it's a drop in you don't need to book every Thursday morning at the Angel Centre between 10 and 12 is a job club where you can come with us and Salix Homes um, their computers there you can use advice you can get etc it's all within the COVID rules. In, in fact, everyone's wearing a mask at the moment, which I think is very sensible. And um, social distancing, et cetera, the numbers are more limited at the moment, but it's still a drop-in facility. So again, if you want to drop in to use facilities free of charge to get more advice, um, help with a range of mock interview, you know, practical advice, help with an application form, We've done quite a few even in the last few weeks or a couple rather and um or further help with your cv or for someone to review your cv you know where we are and you can come anytime some people come every week some people drop in etc and i'll get back to work course which a lot of today was extracted from we do we had a large grant from greater manchester combined authority so we are able to lend laptops um and wi-fi access through dongles that uh, so we can and we can help set them up so we can actually lend equipment if you need it to participate but that course takes place 10 30 to 4 30 including breaks every every two wednesdays on a rolling basis till the end of term at the end of june still quite a few courses to go and the only criteria is you have to be 19 plus and live in Salford. there's no other criteria i mean you can even be working part-time etc there's no other criteria at all very basic criteria so that's um, perhaps that that's the most intensive hopefully practical course we do and a lot of today's been extracted from that um, if you are interested in any of this um, you can contact fit limited on 07933120194 we never turn people away so if you just want to ring just to clarify some of the points i've made today but don't want to participate in anything with us, absolutely delighted. We're here to help. It's about the individual. It's not for profit, nothing else. So you're very welcome to ring. And finally, finally, just to, um, just to um, highlight our philosophy, philosophy of being positive and glass half full, it's quite interesting because yesterday in the job club, because of social distancing, we've had to split it into two rooms me and one of my colleague in another. And I just went into my colleague's room when I was in the other room just, and I heard they were, they were all the people sitting around were all saying, well, the glass half full, just as Graham says, and I wasn't even in the room. But I'm glad that that phrase is, is, is catching on. Because glass half full also means it's half empty. I accept that, but you don't focus on that. To deal with an issue or a problem, you have to rise above it and try, you know, if you get dragged down into it, it becomes more difficult to, to cope with. So the last thing I want to tell you is a very motivational story to, to highlight that, you know, however hard you might think it is, you know, you can succeed. I'm going to show you this photo. To say it's not interactive, so I'm not getting response from you, but the, um, I'm sure you will all recognise that one of the people in this photo is Nelson Mandela. The guy who's standing over him with his hands on his shoulder is my late uncle, Chief Rabbi Cyril Harris, who was the Chief Rabbi of South Africa. Now, the moral of this story, we've come full circle about being positive. My late uncle came from a very poor Glasgow family. That they'd actually been, obviously they came from Eastern Europe originally, but they'd been in this country for quite a long time, in fact. In fact my grandmother was actually born in Wales um, rather than East, Eastern Europe. They'd been here for, for quite a few generations. That side of the family. Now, 
my grand my grandmother was was penniless they were very very poor my grandfather died when he was very young and my grandmother had nothing she came to live with us the last part of her life and when she passed away sadly in our home she left a few old sixpences in a, in a money box she was very very poor so I, someone I, i'll never know who relative or someone paid for my uncle to go to university i don't know how that happened but the point was he was a really 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 poor penniless last region boy okay and he ended his career very much on the high with it, with this important position in south africa and it was also the last job he ever had so you don't know what's ahead of you he didn't expect that he thought we were just going to whittle out the last years of his retirement where he was. Okay. So his most successful part of his career and employment was actually at the end. So don't think, you know, whatever age you are, you, you lovely people who are looking at this, you know, don't, don't think that that's necessarily the end. It's not, he didn't expect this. And he came, you know, he, he, he had a terrible start in life. He was quite young when his father died and he had, they had nothing. They, they struggled. They lost their house and everything. OK, but he still, through his determination to to make um, an impact in the world. And it's incredible. Twenty three of us went out there for his farewell. It was 500 people. there. It's absolutely incredible. They started a charity to help the indigenous population in South Africa. And they did the most incredible work. And the family have got a letter. I've got a photocopy of it. My aunt is from Manchester, by the way still out there in South Africa doing good work. Nelson Mandela wrote a personal letter um, to the family when my uncle sadly died. And they were great mates. My uncle organized a weekend seminar in Robin Island, where as I'm sure you all know, Nelson Mandela was imprisoned for most of his time. And he slept in Nelson Mandela's cell for the weekend, just to see what it was like. And there's lots and lots of stories. Um, they, they became great mates and lots and lots of stories. He got my uncle involved in writing the New South Africa Constitution. I've got a book about the 10 makers of the New South Africa. And my uncle is one of them. So outside of the Jewish community, he contributed all. And there's just a, a few very few points um, about him. But the point of the story is, is a motivational story. This is somebody who had nothing during his childhood and whose mother was struggling to bring up this family. And not only did he achieve great things in his life, but it was at the end of his life. And it was his last bit of his career. Okay, and I could tell you lots of stories about that, but we've really run out of time. But this is the point. So however difficult it is, you know, you don't get out, don't give up. Very motivational character. And my aunt is to say still out, out there. And she's from Manchester. And she's very, she still comes back to Manchester to visit. And I tell her all about what Fit Limited does. She does similar work in South Africa. And she's an example of it. She's in her 80s. She works harder than me. She was the chair of the African Jewish National Congress, they call it, traveling all over Africa. We're still having, obviously, while he was still with us, having tea with Nelson Mandela. And doing great things. Okay. And that's somebody who's from Manchester, whose mother, who I knew, I used to go visit her in Schools Lane, if you know it, right, when I was a little boy. I've always had links with Manchester, okay? My aunt came from Manchester. Her mother was in the clothing business, not uncommon in Manchester. You know, they weren't um, extraordinary people, uh, you know, ordinary people making a living. And she's still in her 80s, is out there doing good work and, and, and fantastic stuff. So it can, it can happen, it's very motivating, it can happen. She was at a conference once and Hillary Clinton came up to her and gave her a before COVID, a big hug and said, how are you? Mrs. Harris is so pleased, you know, she's doing fantastic stuff. She's an ordinary lass from Manchester. Okay, so be positive, don't give up. You don't know what's still ahead of you. And there's an example from my aunt and uncle, very modest, particularly my uncle beginnings, and the peak of their working life, the peak of their employment, the peak of their achievements, the peak of their career was actually at the end and they didn't expect it. So you don't know what's ahead of you. I hope you found it useful and <laughs> unusual for me not having the interaction. 
But um, thanks for listening. I wish you luck. And if Fit Limited can help, then just give us a ring. Thank you very much. Graham, a big thank you uh, for being with us today. I'm sure other members uh, share my sentiment and everyone else. You've, you talked to us today about really about being positive, motivated and determined. You shared with us lived experiences, tips and lots and lots of examples. And you told us really, you, you gave us an, a, a wonderful, informative and knowledgeable insight into how to go about being confident in our job search, writing our CVs in interviews, whether we're looking for employment, volunteering, or as you said, uh, continuing, continuing with further education and courses. And you've given some concrete examples uh, as well as uh, uh, places where, where people could uh, take this further. Um, once again, thank you very much, Graham, for being with us today. And uh, we hope to see you soon again. Thank you very much, Jay. Thanks. Okay.